Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is How to Learn to Code in Unity, and welcome to the final episode. So this time we're going to combine many things we've already learned throughout this series to create something competent in Unity, and we'll also look at being able to create mobile controls because it's a lot easier than you would think. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a quick scene with some buttons, an object, and then we'll get writing some scripts. So the idea of what we can do, we have learned it previously using static functions and being able to reference different scripts and being able to move objects. So let's have a look at combining everything together. So game object, 3D object, cube, and we'll just set that in the center of the scene. And I'm going to have the main camera just look at it as it is, because we're going to be able to do stuff that will allow us to move that cube on command via scripts. So next thing we need to do is let's create a couple of buttons. So UI and button. And I'm going to have this button in the center. And I'm just going to change the text of this button just to have an arrow. Or we'll just have it say left. So left and inverse to that another button over here. And we'll have this one just say right. And probably best if we actually rename them as well. Left and right. And we'll do the same again, except obviously for up and down. So F2, down. And also change the text. And yeah, you've already guessed it. So this sort of thing that I'm doing here is a great way to actually learn how to interact with code itself. It's not necessarily a project which you could be working on, but it's great to reference this sort of thing in the future. So now let's get a script going. So create a C-sharp script and let's call this buttons pressed. So as we worked with buttons before, we're going to do this and combine all the buttons together, but we're going to make it able to actually interact with objects on the screen. So if we get rid of everything there and we need to set two variables, so they're going to be public and static because we need to reference them in a separate script because we're going to show stuff on screen as well. So public, static, uh, int, and I'm going to call it x pause. And another one, public, static, int, and y, pause. So we're going to do a couple of voids here. So void, left, button, open close bracket, open curly bracket. That should be public void, remember, because we're using C sharp and we're actually going to use the button itself. So public void, left button, and this is going to happen if we uh, press the left button right here we want this cube to actually move left so we need to look at the position so this has to be done via the x and we have to go in a negative as we can see over here so what we do is x pos minus equals one nice and simple and we can literally copy that paste 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 a couple of times and just rename to right button and up button and down button so obviously x pause press the right button we're going to have to plus equals up button we're going to have to change it to y pause and that's going to be plus equals and then this final one down button that's on the y yet again and that's going to be minus one. So you can see what's going on here. So I'm sure you guys may have already guessed what's gonna happen at this point because the actual object that we have as the cube has no real way of moving, but if we press play, you can see this is the setup which we're gonna go for. And as I said at the beginning of this episode, we're gonna look at mobile controls. Now, one fantastic thing about Unity is these buttons themselves especially if you're using one of the latest versions of Unity, at least, I'd say version 5.5 or 5.6, these will work perfectly fine as actual touch buttons. And it may actually work in earlier versions of Unity 5. I haven't actually tested it. I've only tested it in later versions. So let's get this script actually interacting with the cube. So right click, create C sharp script, and we'll have cube movement. 
So there are a couple of different ways to um, kind of work with this. Void update isn't necessarily the best way of doing it, but in something like this where there's hardly any resources being used, it's perfectly acceptable to do something like this. And the simplicity of it is, like I say, it's, it's a lot simpler than you think. Coding is not as difficult as what you would expect it to be. So we need to go public game object and we'll just have um in fact i don't even think we need the game object to be honest but i might just reference the game object itself just to kind of prove a point so we'll just do the cube because you could technically do it as referencing this using the word this in the void update but i guess we could use the cube as something else attach it to a different object and we'll just see how that works out again it's just different ways of showing how coding can work in unity so what we'll do is the cube dot transform in fact sorry that should be a lowercase transform dot position equals new vector three open bracket and what we need to do is reference those static variables here because as you can imagine when we press these buttons once we've got them set up these static variables will remain the actual value that we can reference from this cube movement. So we need X and Y. So what we need to do, I'm sure you guessed it. Buttons pressed dot X pause comma buttons pressed dot Y pause. And we're going to keep the Z or Z as the same which is currently zero so we can literally put zero if you wanted to go that one step further and have the third dimension moving as a position from buttons you could do that just as easily setting up the same way here so close bracket semicolon and save now first things first i'm actually going to set this up on a new game object so create empty and we'll have this called as movement function and then we'll put the cube movement script onto there and just add the cube as the variable and now what we need to do is add another game object so create empty and we have this as buttons object i'm going to do this real quick because we've got to do it four times so left button plus buttons object over no function buttons pressed and this one is the left button which is right there so same again with right, adding plus, buttons object, no function, buttons pressed, right button, same again with down. So a lot of people do struggle with buttons and how to get them working correctly. And as I say, with a lot of things in Unity, it seems difficult, but it really isn't once you get into the nitty gritty bits of it and work hard. It's It really is easy. So we're doing up here. So now when we press play, we should be able to control this using these buttons. And if you can imagine this being your touch screen on your phone or iPad or whatever, and these buttons would work the same way. So if you've got something, for example, like the Unity 5 remote, that works wonders with this. Um, it's worth noting though, if you're testing for Android, it works perfectly fine with a Windows device, but if you want to test for an iOS device, you actually need a Mac to test for that. It's just one of those things. But this is how it works. It, it, this is a combination of many things we've learned throughout this series. And another way of doing it is if you wanted to have that movement function on the cube itself, so if we get rid of the movement function object and put cube movement onto the cube itself, it wouldn't make much of a difference as long as you define the cube itself as its own object there, it will still change. And we can always see these variables on the um, buttons object right there. The script is here. And what you would have to do is rather than have public static is you would have public int like, and then internal y pos, internal x pos, and you would see them in the inspector panel here. Remember, they don't appear because they're static. That is the reason why they don't appear. So what we'll also do to kind of give us a visualization is game object and let's have UI 
and text. I'm not going to bother with text format it too much. I'll just have it as white and down the bottom a little bit bigger. So let's have 26 maybe and get rid of the text. And what I'll also do in the cube movement is I will add in using unity engine dot UI semicolon. And in void update, what I'll do is, oh, in fact, we'll actually declare it as a variable. So public game object and we'll have on screen and it's just simply going to be on screen dot get component in spiky brackets text oh, close bracket dot text um, is equal to double quote plus and then we can copy buttons press dot xpos and then what I'll do is do plus and then a space and then plus and then buttons pressed dot y pause semicolon and save so now obviously on the cube itself we have to just quickly set that uh, text as the variable and we should be able to see down here x position and y position so again, that's another way of defining everything we've done so far up to the end of this series and combining it. And as I say, coding may seem difficult and daunting, but honestly, it's not once you get down to it. And there's always a way of combining code like we've done here to create anything you would want, any kind of scenario. So guys, I hope this series has given you a bit of insight on how to code in Unity. And don't forget, I've got plenty of other videos that you can reference with further scripting and further ideas. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. If I'm not able to answer them, I have a big community. I have plenty of subscribers who are always willing to help and they can probably provide an answer for you if I'm not able to. So guys, I want to say thank you very much for following this series. And as I say, for further education, please check out my channel. Thank you very much for watching.